SLD අලුත් මෙගා ලයින් කනෙක්ෂන් වලට 150ක දීම නා තවත් ඔෆර් ගැන දැනගන්න 1 2 1 2 ක අමතන්න The Sun Festival, Sri Lanka ushers in the Singhala and Tamil New Year. President urges all Sri Lankans to plant a sapling tomorrow to celebrate the timeless link between nature and man. Stern measures, 237 drunk drivers arrested across the island within 24 hours. Maiden flight, world's largest plane strato launch lifts off for the first time. A comfortable win. Hamilton cruises to secure 6th Formula 1 Chinese Grand Prix. All this and much more coming up on First at 9 this Sunday, the 14th of April 2019. From Adha Derana, this is Adha Derana First at 9. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Well, a very good evening and welcome to First at Nine on Adaderana 24, Sri Lanka's news channel. I'm Katrina Chang and before we start off our bulletin, we would like to wish our viewers a very happy Singhala and Tamil New Year from us yet here on First at Nine. Now, millions across the country had their eyes glued to the clock as a Singhala and Tamil New Year dawned at the auspicious time of nine past two this afternoon, erupting celebrations across the country. Now, people were seen partaking in religious observances and various traditional practices, which include the ceremony of lighting of the hearth in hope of a prosperous Singhala and Tamil New Year. With the transition of sun turning from Pisces to Aries in the celestial sphere, Sri Lankan celebrated the Singhala and Tamil New Year. With the season's inauspicious time falling at 7.45 in the morning, people halted all manner of work and were seen turning out in large numbers at temples for religious observances. Today is the best day to harbor new thought, new plan and also good day to have a determination to achieve certain prospect in this life. If you decide and determine and frame a target that you are going to achieve in this year, today is the best day. If we determine to do certain things, you should abandon your laziness and also you have to determine and you have to be very active. You should abandon jealousy from your mind. You have to support your friends, your people, those who work with you and you should cultivate the mudita and show your gratitude to your own people and to you as well as to the environment where you live. The much-awaited New Year dawned at 9 past 2 in the afternoon, sparking a multitude of celebrations across the island. The auspicious time to light the hearth and prepare meals arrived at 2.42 p.m. At the auspicious time of 3.54, people were seen commencing work, engaging in transactions and having meals. The auspicious time to anoint oil falls on Wednesday the 17th and the anointment should be done with herbal oil also known as nanu which has to be made out of juice extracted from neem leaves or better known as kohumba. The herbal oil should be anointed at 7.40 am with kolon leaves for feet and kohumba leaves overhead. The advised colour for the auspicious time is green. The last of the auspicious time setting off for work is on the 18th next Thursday at 4.52 in the morning facing east. 
Now, New Year is a season which brings about family bondings, togetherness and adherence to traditions. One of the special features of the Singhal and Tamil New Year is the observance of auspicious times where it is customary to undertake various tasks. These customs may vary depending on the region or where they are observed. Most of them were passed down from generation to generation and are preserved. But have you ever stopped to think of the rationale behind the customs we so ardently embrace? The dawn of the Singhala and Tamil New Year serves as a beacon for people who are away from their families and loved ones, owing to work commitments, to take a break from their daily grind and return home. For this very reason, it is a time of effervescence. The season revolves around getting closer to nature, observing auspicious times as well as rekindling ties and bonds with family, neighbours and friends. What makes the season unique and perhaps even important is certain customs that have been followed for hundreds of years. Withstanding the test of time, they are practised even today, creating a sturdy connection between generations. As it is the case with time, Certain such customs and traditions are seen less frequently in modern times and are on the verge of being forgotten forever. But all these things hold no importance if they aren't in place for a good reason. That's where Professor J.B. Disanayaka comes in. See, this new way is based on astrology and that is related to the movement of the sun. So we believe that once a year when the sun moves into Pisces, the last one, it marks the end of a year. But the new one doesn't begin immediately after that. That's the strangest. So there's a time in between the old year and the new year. When the sun is in transit, new year has not dawned yet, so you are out of time. So this is all mythology, all belief. There's no science involved in this matter. So dangerous, ambiguity. So therefore, during this ambiguity, period ambiguity, we make sure that we don't touch certain things, do certain things. For example, one of the most important things in life is fire. So during the, this period, we don't touch fire. We take the fire off at a certain point and bring the new fire again at the auspicious time. But in between, there's no fire in the house. The fire is a symbol of fertility. What is like fire, what is again a symbol of fertility. Our life goes with fire and water. So no problem. The third thing is working. We can't work during that inauspicious moment. So dangerous. But you have many hours, about five hours to spend. So what do you do with that hour? In danger, the safest place to be for a Buddhist is the temple. Then you play. When the auspicious times dawns to do transactions, most of us either go to the bank or exchange money among family members. But how many of us knew of a custom where a transaction is done with a water well, where the well is given a pouch consisting of flowers, coins and charcoal, in exchange for a bucket of water. There's a symbolic beginning of working called Vedalana. So there's a transaction with water. You put something into the well and draw the first bucket full of water. What do you put into the well? At least a piece of charcoal, some flowers, and a copper coin, not any coin, a copper coin. So you put a copper coin, not for its monetary value. The human body needs copper. There's no other way to take copper unless you put the copper into the well, which get dissolved over a year. So as you drink your water, you get your copper quite unawares. Out of sheer curiosity, we asked Professor J.B. Desanayaka the reasons behind the custom, where the first oil cake, which is locally known as kaum, is suspended in the kitchen. And when you do that during this period, certain flies uh, come, come around, get the smell and they come around. So to distract them, they hang another Kauma on a string, and you call it Konduru Kauma. When you start making Kaum, it's a custom for the one who cooks to be silent. Don't talk about it. Because I think when you see you, you know, when you speak, spit might, might come into it. To prevent saliva getting into it, no words are spoken. So there are customs which are meaningful. It is also customary to visit parents on the day of the Nivea. Given Sri Lanka is a country where elders are treated with reverence and respect on each day of the calendar, a particularly stipulated custom to respect elders seems pointless. Yet, there it is there, but why? And this, this custom of uh, uh, visiting the parents with gifts is another very important matter, because that keeps the family, going, family together. So here, the new year makes them come back. So parents are visited by the children, by their children, 
with gifts. So this makes the family again very active. Otherwise, they will be spread all over. And it, it family, so families make the society. So if the families are happy, the society is happy. A custom of tree planting has been added to this year's Sinhala and Tamil New Year customs. President Maithripala Sirisen has appealed to all Sri Lankans to plant a sapling or a seed at the auspicious time of 11.17 a.m. tomorrow in a bid to ful fulfill one's responsibility to protect the environment and the future generation. According to the President's media division, the sapling should be planted facing the east, suitably clad in white. President Maitripala Sirisena celebrated the dawn of the Singhala and Tamil New Year together with his family at his official residence in Colombo today. President Sirisena took part in the traditional custom of lighting the hearth at 2.42 p.m. at the President's official residence. The President later engaged in the custom of commencing work at the auspicious time of 3.54 p.m. by planting a tree at the premises of his residence and later partook in meals. In his New Year address, the President made a request from all citizens to plant a tree tomorrow at the auspicious time of 11.17 a.m. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe engaged in religious observances at the Mahagastura Sri Senanda Ramavihare in New Aurelia following the dawn of the new year. Handwa Khatiyata Harana Aurudde Obata Boho Sadhaniya Deval Api Itukala Labana Avu Alut Aurudde Apa Tavat Sadhaniya Deval Boho Meak Obavenuen Karano E Atara Adhyapanya Idam Himikam Nivasa Ha Saukya Pahasukam Vage Deval Pradana Stanya Ganno Oba Samatama Suba Alut Aurudda Kweva Meanwhile, opposition leader Mahinda Rajapaksa welcomed the new year at his Carlton residence in Tangol. Aperata Jati Shakma to a Pauli to no other ray, Bendy Minisai. Alutoru do Tsuegani, a Bendy Matikaran, a Pauli Bendy Shakti Matkaran, Udar Jati Ulla. Mira de Silu do the Rwanda. Uba Surdinata, Satutin, Yogi Kami, Virivasana, and Talut, or Dakwevai, a Pratanaka. Now, if there is one way to celebrate the festive season, it is by sharing the traditions and customs that is followed in the Singhal and Tamil New Year. Now, tourists on holiday were seen uh, joining in the New Year festivities today, being able to get a glimpse into the festive activities. Tourists were seen celebrating the New Year together with Sri Lankans in many hotels in Colombo and down south. From enjoying traditional sweet meats and other food items served during the New Year festivities to taking part in traditional games, tourists were able to learn customs and traditions practiced in the New Year. While we celebrate Singhla and Tamil New Year here in Sri Lanka, even Sri Lankans in the United Kingdom too got the opportunity to usher in the Singhla and Tamil New Year in London. New Year celebrations were organized by the Heathrow Atula Dasana International Buddhist Temple and the Sahana Foundation. The festival included a number of traditional New Year games followed by a cultural show. TV Dharana was the media sponsor for the event. Meanwhile, a special New Year program, Diyavan Navata Aurudu, organized by TV Dharana, was held for parliamentarians in both the government and opposition. Parliamentarians were able to let loose as they participated for a number of outdoor games, celebrating the Singhala and Tamil New Year. MPs also got the uh, opportunity to showcase uh, their secret talents such as singing and music during the program. 
A number of houses have been damaged in the area of Rajangan in Anuradhapura owing to strong gusts of wind experienced in the area. Meanwhile, the Department of Meteorology issued weather advisory of severe thunderstorm accompanied by heavy rainfall in the western, southern and Sabaragama provinces, which are marked as high-risk areas. A number of houses and farmlands in Kalundegama, Rajangane and Srimapura in Anuradhapura were severely damaged owing to strong winds experienced in the area last night. Meanwhile, the Department of Meteorology says that showers or thunder showers will occur at several places in the central Sabaragamua, southern, Uwa and western provinces as well as Anuradhapura, Waunia and Mana districts. Among these areas, Sabaragamua, central and Uwa provinces as well as Gaul, Mathura and Kalutara districts are to experience fairly heavy rainfall of about 50 millimetres. Meanwhile, issuing a severe thunderstorm and heavy rainfall advisory, the Med Department says that showers accompanied by severe lightning and thunder are likely to occur in several provinces, with Sabaragamu, southern and western provinces in particular identified as high-risk areas. It also says that temporarily strong gusty winds up to 70 to 80 km per hour are to be expected during the thunder showers. Also speaking about the prevailing dry weather conditions, Deputy Director of the Disaster Management Centre Pradeep Kodi Pili meanwhile says that 300 water bouses have been supplied to drought affected areas. The Ministry of Disaster Management and with the support of Water Board, where we are continuously distributing uh, the water. 300 water bouses being supplied from the Ministry of Disaster Management, and uh, we are uh, continuously funding uh, the District Secretary to facilitate all uh, the COVID debt uh, situation. And more than uh, 1 million been allocated uh, prior to the disaster and continues uh, with the funds of the Ministry of Disaster Management. And people are advised to take precautions to minimize the damages of the lightning activities, especially in the afternoon. The 117 call center number is completely on basis. Police headquarters announced that 237 drunk drivers were arrested in a special 24-hour operation in order to maintain law and order during the festive season. The police also announced that over 6,600 cases were filed for the violation of traffic laws during this period. Meanwhile, several accidents were reported across the island during the day today. An accident took place early this morning when a three-wheeler veered off the road at Bogahamaditta in Haliala. Three persons who were injured were admitted to the Badulla General Hospital and are currently receiving treatment. Another three persons sustained injuries when the cab they were travelling in veered off the road at Viharagala in Haputale. Meanwhile, a lorry transporting goods from Colombo to Bandara Villa met with an accident at Doha in Bandara Villa. Police said that the driver lost control of the vehicle. However, no injuries were reported. Meanwhile, police have arrested 237 drunk drivers during an island-wide operation in the 24 hours between 6 a.m. yesterday and 6 this morning. Meanwhile, 6,651 cases have been filed for various traffic offences during this time period. This brings the total number of motorists arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol between 6 a.m. on April 11th and 6 a.m. on April 14th to 771. The number of traffic cases filed during the past three days is 26,425. A foreign media reports that a total of 558 irregular migrants, including Sri Lankan nationals, were held across a Turkey. According to Turkish security sources, security personnel spotted groups of migrants in western Edrin province who were attempting to cross to Europe. The report went on to say that the migrants are said to be from Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Morocco, Tunisia, Iran, Iraq, Palestine, Egypt and Syria. Turkey has been the main route for refugees trying to cross to Europe, especially since the beginning of the civil war in Syria. According to the Interior Ministry, some 268,000 irregular migrants were held in Turkey in 2018. Well, we have business news on the other side, so make sure you stay tuned for more. are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel. This is Other Therana 24.
International Monetary Fund Managing Director Christine Lagarde said today accountability, transparency and effective communication were key components for central banks to be credible and delivering their mandates. She was speaking to media at the 2019 IMF World Bank Spring Meetings in Washington. And they have different mandates and there are different ways around the world to organize oneself, clearly, when you're a central bank governor. But independence has served them well over the course of time and hopefully will continue to do so. The clearer the mandate of a central bank, the easier it is to hold a central bank uh, accountable. And so whilst the central banks are given the independence to pursue their, ma uh, their mandate, the flip side of independence is that of accountability, that uh, central banks have got to be accountable on how well they are doing in fulfilling their mandates. The broader the, manda the mandate, the more difficult it is to hold the central banks accountable with respect to the execution of their mandates. Now, New York might be the financial capital of the world, but China is home to the planet's mightiest banks. According to the latest annual ranking by S&P Global Market Intelligence, the top four banks in the world are from China. S&P said that despite the trade war and currency troubles, China's big four banks grew their total assets by 1% last year to 13.8 trillion US dollars. The list is led by Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, which retained its title as the world's biggest bank. ICBC is the only lender that has amassed more than 4 trillion US dollars in assets or roughly the size of Citigroup and Wells Fargo combined. The next three biggest Chinese banks are each north of 3 trillion US dollars. China Construction Bank, Agriculture Bank of China and Bank of China, all four banks are state owned. Well, it is not New Year just here in Sri Lanka, but Bangladeshis took to the streets today to celebrate the first day of the Bengali New Year. A procession of colourful floats organised by university students moved amongst the crowds of revellers and security in Dhaka as people in colourful clothes beat drums and danced. The festival date is set according to the Bengali calendar and is on the first day of the first month of the year. Across the border in various parts of India, this day is marked in some areas as a harvest festival. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel. This is Adhatherana 24. And with that, we conclude this edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening.